In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. In today's Monday, Thursday service, one writing it, I began like I often do. I meditated on my reading, listening carefully for what words might jump out at me the most. Sat on the couch with my shoes off, cat curled up next to me, I mean, cat curled up on me, feet propped up, and it was during that time that I became hyper aware of my feet. It felt good to wiggle my toes, socks off, maybe not barefoot outside temperature, but nice enough inside. And I really encourage you, if you want to, it's okay, go ahead and slip one shoe off and just start wiggling your toes around and start feeling a little bit of what I did when I was meditating on this passage. I walked on the linoleum floor of my kitchen and it was cold. I walked on the heated tile floor of my upstairs bathroom and it felt great, it was so warm. And then I squiggled my toes into the plush carpet in my living room and it was luxurious. Reading tonight's reading made me think about my feet and how I would feel if Jesus wanted to touch them or how I would feel if one of you touched them. I don't think it struck me as odd before, not that Jesus washed the disciples' feet. That didn't strike me as odd. I kind of expected it. I know the story. But it struck me as odd that no one had done it earlier. Foot washing was a normal part of hospitality. Bare feet or wearing sandals, no socks, your feet are gonna get dirty. And normally, a servant would have taken care of that as they came to the house for dinner. Since it hadn't happened, I'm assuming that for whatever reason, the servants weren't around. I can almost hear the thoughts of the disciples that night as they walked into the door. Huh, wait, uh, so where's the servant now? Who's going to take care of our feet? I don't think I should do it because what will that say about me? I'm not the person who's on the bottom. I'm no slave. Maybe, maybe my feet really aren't that dirty. I really tried to make a point of not stepping in anything janky. So I think my feet are probably, they're pretty good. They're not too funky. And well, look. Jesus, he's reclining at the table, so it must be okay to eat with dirty feet now. Jesus is just the coolest. Don't you love it the way that he just bucks these outdated customs? That's how I picture their inner dialogue. And I hope you noticed the way that I did that. I started with seeing myself as better than everyone else. I'm no slave, I'm not at the bottom. And then I was really quick in normalizing my own dirt. I picture Jesus reaching for each disciple's feet that night. And I can imagine what Jesus's inner dialogue might have been, by, been like a little bit as he washed their feet. Wow, what did you step in? You've been walking around with that all night? Or wow, is, what kind of pressure wound is that? I think you need like looser shoes or why are you pulling back? Did that hurt your feet? Do you have plantar fasciitis? <laughs> I think he probably said plantar fasciitis. Okay, let's dry this foot off. Can I have the next one now? In a way, I think that Jesus was always the person who was supposed to wash their feet that night. Maybe there wasn't a prophecy foretelling it, but I think there's a reason we don't find the slave at their post that night, ready to wash everyone's feet. It was so that our feet could become the object lesson for why Jesus came. He was probably closer to their feet than they'd been for a long time. And he's always seen our dirt more clearly than we see our own. 
I don't believe it stops there, though. Jesus has a better perspective of us down on the floor cleaning our feet. He sees the dirt we might not see, ready to forgive us, and there to help heal the broken relationship that we had with God. On the floor, Jesus was in a position to see our injuries, the calluses and strains and sprains as we go about our day toiling away, carrying too much all on our own. We love being self-sufficient and on top, but Jesus is teaching us that in God's kingdom, that's not what being washed by Jesus looks like. He's also giving us the lesson of loving like Jesus, the lesson that sometimes God wants to use us to help wash away other people's dirt or to tend to each other's injuries. Jesus's lesson in Maundy Thursday becomes a metaphor for serving each other, not just today, but in the weeks to come. Amen.